Okay guys, so I'm here to help you with question number one. So what you wanna do is prepare an Excel spreadsheet. It says Excel, but you could do this in Google Sheets and I will do this in Google Sheets, uh, but it should work pretty much the same way. And it says right here that there is a copy pasteable template. That's table 1C in your lab manual. So I would go to the lab manual and um, lo and behold, there is. And so you should be able to go in and just select uh, the contents of that table, um, go ahead and copy it and paste it into whatever program you want to use, Excel, Sheets, Numbers, whatever spreadsheet program you use. I'm going to use Sheets and so we'll start a blank sheet here um, and we'll go ahead and paste this in and see how it looks. Perfect. Um, so we've got columns A through H. We have to type in some data. So you're going to be busy just for a second typing data. Get all your data typed in for columns B and C and then also for columns uh, E and F. Uh, so go do that and then come back to the video. Okay, so I have all my data entered uh, into columns B, C, E, and F. You're going to notice that um, there's some inconsistencies in the number of decimal places for burette readings, and we should never have that, right? Um, all burette readings can be read to two decimal places. So it turns out that if that was a zero that I entered there, like 12.80, um, then Excel or, or Sheets or whatever, they'll, they'll truncate the number, right? But we can't show it that way. That's not... Uh, correct. So we're going to go up to use this tool here. It says increase number of decimal places. So go ahead and highlight any cells that you want to do that with. And then, uh, so that's a handy, quick little tool. So you see now that zero is displayed. I'm going to do that here as well. I'm going to see that this number was truncated because it's not four decimal places. So I'm going to use my tool there. Um, and now everything is consistent, right? Because masses that are taken on an analytical balance, they should be recorded to four decimal places. All right, so now it's time to enter the formulas. So the instructions say to type in an equal sign, and then you can either click in the cell um, or you can type in the cell formula. For example, you could type in C2 or you could just click inside of that cell C2. Um, but what is the volume of water going to be? It's going to be the volume final minus the volume initial. And that makes sense. We couldn't do the other way around because you can't have a negative volume, right? So it's not initial minus final. It's always final minus initial. So it's going to be equal to this cell minus this cell. So I'm going to go ahead and enter that. And I see that the volume that has been added is actually 9.8 milliliters. Uh, sometimes it offers you um, autofill so that you can fill the, the formula as you've entered it here for the next um, three rows down. It didn't do that, but I can also grab the little um, dot or crosshair if it's uh, Excel or, or uh, numbers, if you're using a Mac. Um, numbers, it's right here in the middle, uh, but you can grab that and drag it down and that will paste, uh, oops, I don't want that one going to get rid of that. Um, and it will paste that uh, formula in, right? And so instead of being uh, C2 minus B2, it's now C3 minus B3, C4 minus B4, and so on and so forth. I'm going to go ahead and correct my uh, decimal places. So I want to have uh, two decimal places for each of these um, values. Perfect. I'm going to go over to uh, column G, and I want the mass of the water. I'm going to calculate that from my data. So it's going to be the mass of the beaker with the water minus the mass of just the beaker. So it's going to be equal sign F2 minus E2, and uh, it's going to give me this. Again, you might get, you might see an automatic pop up that allows you to fill in or complete the rest of the cell formulas there. Um, and if you don't see it, you can do it manually, just drag. So now what we want to do, check and make sure I have all of my sig figs. There we go. I've adjusted uh, G4 to be four decimal places long, as all the other mass data is. Um, now we want a calculated density. It's a mass divided by a volume. So we're going to use our 
our mass that we calculated in column G and divide that by our volume of water from column D. And there's our suggested autofill. So yes, I'm going to go ahead and take that suggestion. And there you have the, uh, the densities. Now density was calculated through division. And if you're multiplying or dividing, then your number of significant figures is going to be determined by the uh, value that had the fewest number of significant figures, right? So it's definitely not going to be my mass, right? That had way more significant figures uh, than my volume. And it looks like the volume uh, is based on uh, three significant figures here. So my, um, my calculated uh, density, I can actually limit that down using this tool. Um, I can limit that down to a more reasonable number of significant figures. And, uh, and so since three sig figs is, is, um, what I have here in, in row two, I can go ahead and limit that down to, uh, three sig figs, right? Three sig figs, three sig figs. And here I actually had four sig figs. Um, and so that can be advanced to four sig figs since I determined this number based on measurements with these number of significant figures. Okay, so after we get all of our densities, we want to uh, do some statistical analysis. So this is going to mean um, the average, the standard deviation, and the percent relative standard deviation. So I'm just going to label these uh, columns here, uh, or sorry, these rows, uh, row six, seven, and eight in column G. Uh, and then I'm going to enter the cell formulas into column H. Uh, looks like, uh, you know, Sheets is pretty smart and it's, it's suggesting that I want the average of, uh, these rows, um, or the cells, uh, preceding it in column H. And that's exactly what I want to do. So I could just take its suggestion, um, and uh, I'll share my screen with you there. Um, and we'll see that the average is 1.04, the average density of all of these four densities. Um, uh, that's fine. Um, and if it didn't offer you that, then the actual formula is that you want to type in average and then parentheses and then go ahead and select whatever values you want to take the average of, and that will get you your average. So we'll go ahead and do now the standard deviation. That's going to be equal. Again, it's going to offer this suggestion. It's pretty smart, knows what we're trying to do here. Um, so that would be the standard deviation, um, which again is a test of the variability of our data. Um, and that's something that we want to always go ahead and limit down to uh, two significant figures. And then lastly, uh, we want a percent relative standard deviation, which is always going to be the standard deviation divided by the average uh, times 100. Okay, so we have a 5% relative standard deviation. Um, and then I can go ahead and limit that down to uh, five and a half percent, I should say, two significant figures.